Went to the doctor for a physical exam. Learned that he had an aggressive brain tumor. This morning, Senator John McCain's recovering at his home in Arizona after having that tumor removed just six short days ago. It's a glioblastoma. It forms in the tissue of the brain and the spinal cord. Senator's doctors say he's now considering treatment options, which would likely include radiation and chemotherapy. Radiation oncologist Dr. Scott Ackerman joins us here on The Morning Show. Doc, what is next for the senator? Well, first he needs to recover from the surgery, which it seems like he has. He's up, up talking and out and about. And then typically after someone is diagnosed with a glioblastoma and has it resected, uh, we typically recommend uh, radiation therapy and chemotherapy. And what's the prognosis? Well, the prognosis is pretty grim for patients with glioblastomas. Um, most patients, on average, patients only live about 14 months. And uh, there's less than 10% patients that live up to five years. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, you know, there are people who beat the odds. There was a study that came out in 2009, I think it was, that talked about the fact that some people have a, a chance of living for five years. And you have a patient who beat the odds as well. Right. We recently had a patient who uh, lived for eight years after a glioblastoma. He got married uh, in the interim, actually. Uh, he had it removed, it had radiation, and then about seven years later, he had a recurrence, had it removed again, and more radiation. So there are these outliers. And one thing with Senator McCain, he has a lot of good, thing, uh, good uh, things going for him. A lot of prognosticators are positive for him. He's had the surgery. He's had it re completely resected. The physicians at Mayo Clinic said that they removed it completely, and they saw that in a post-operative scan. And he's up and about and functional. And those things, being functional, having completely resected, all uh, argue towards a better prognosis. And, and he's a fighter, which I want to talk about in a second. But first, some of the things that may lead you to believe that there's a problem. There was an incident about a week, week and a half ago, where he was talking to the news media about the health care bill, which is enough to stress anybody out. And if you remember, people said he seemed disoriented. If you don't remember, watch for yourself here. In the case of Mr. Comey, you, uh, the President uh, Comey, I mean, excuse no, sir. me, in the case of President Trump, you uh, have an ongoing investigation. And, uh, you, you're going to have to help me out here. You, in other words, we're complete. The investigation of anything that former Secretary Clinton had to do with the campaign is over and we don't have to worry about it anymore. With respect to Secretary, I'm not, I'm, I'm a little confused, Senator. So a lot of people wondered what was going on because the Senator was more confused than he ever has been, at least in a public arena. But he also complained of fatigue and double vision. Typical signs? Yes, um, a lot of patients, once they're diagnosed or uh, once they have symptoms that are more severe, they can reflect back and tell us about symptoms they might have had for a few months. And these symptoms of some forgetfulness, uh, occasional cloudy of the brain, maybe occasional double vision, or maybe a uh, patient might say they have a loss of sight on one side or, or the other. And so frequently patients will have symptoms that predate for a number of months. And in fact, those patients who can predate symptoms for a few months before the diagnosis, as opposed to those that, are, that never have any symptoms and, at, and, and all of a sudden one day have a seizure or have weakness of, of an extremity, those patients that can have these symptoms that are predated the diagnosis do, do better than so those. So slower onset is what you're saying. But slower onset, which, which argues towards more slower growth of this very aggressive tumor. Gotcha. Now, they call this man the Maverick. He no doubt is a fighter. If you know his military history, he survived a horrendous incident when he was a Navy pilot on board uh, an aircraft carrier. Of course, he spent five and a half years in the Hanoi Hilton. That internal fortitude, his emotional strength, and his attitude, how does that help him in his fight? I think that that helps patients in general with all sorts of cancers. Um, that patients who are going through a difficult time, people that are, that have, that are tough and have a positive attitude about things, do better. And I certainly think that would, that, that would help him uh, get through treatment with good attitude, helps one get through their chemotherapy treatment, get through their radiation treatments, and people that make it through the treatments completely do better than those that don't. Emotional is sometimes just as important, if not more so, than the physical. Dr. Ackerman, Absolutely. thank you very much.